Chapter 15 Christmas at Green Gables Mrs. Lynde brought the new dress over on Christmas Eve. So this is what Matthew has been looking so mysterious over and grinning to himself about for two weeks, Marilla said. She tried not to feel insulted that Matthew had asked Mrs. Lynde to make the dress instead of her. There's enough material in those sleeves to make a waist, she said. I hope Anne will finally be satisfied. She has wanted those silly sleeves ever since they came into fashion. Christmas morning broke on a beautiful white world. Anne ran downstairs singing until her voice echoed through green gables. Merry Christmas, Marilla. Merry Christmas, Matthew. Isn't it a lovely Christmas? Matthew sheepishly held the dress up. At first, Anne didn't seem to understand. Then a huge smile broke across her face. Is that for me? she cried. Oh, Matthew. Anne took the dress and looked at it in wonder. It was a lovely and silky brown with all the latest tucks and pinnings. The sleeves were the best of all. Long elbow cuffs with two beautiful brown puffs separated by rows of shirring and bows of brown silk ribbon. It's a Christmas present for you, Anne, said Matthew shyly. Why are you crying? Don't you like it? Anne's eyes had filled with tears. Like it? Oh, Matthew, it's perfectly exquisite. I can never thank you enough. It's like a happy dream, she shouted. Well, let's have breakfast, interrupted Marilla. I must say, I don't think you need the dress, Anne, but since Matthew got it for you, see that you take good care of it. Mrs. Lynde left a hair ribbon for you as well to match the dress. I don't see how I'm going to eat breakfast, said Anne. Breakfast seems so commonplace after such excitement. That night, there was a talent show and concert at the school. Anne recited two poems and was the star of the evening. Oh, Diana, I was so nervous, said Anne later. When Mr. Allen called out my name, I really don't know how I ever got on that stage. Then I thought of my lovely puffed sleeves and took courage. I had to live up to those sleeves. Wasn't the boys acting fine? asked Diana. Gilbert Blythe was splendid. And I think it's awful the way you treat Gil. You know, when you ran off the stage, a rose fell out of your hair. I saw Gil pick it up and put it in his breast pocket. You're such a romantic. I thought you'd be pleased with that. It's nothing to me what that person does, sniffed Anne. I simply never waste a thought on him. That night, Matthew and Marilla sat up and talked by the fire after Anne went to bed. I think our Anne did as well as any of them tonight, said Matthew proudly. Yes, she did, admitted Marilla, although I'd never tell her so. She's so vain already. Well, now, I was proud of her and I told her so right before she went upstairs, said Matthew. She's a smart girl, Marilla. Sooner or later, she's going to need a better school than what we've got here in Avonlea, you know. I've been thinking about that, too, said Marilla. I guess we could send her off the island to Queen's School to learn to become a teacher. But she's got a while yet. She'll be only 13 this year. Well, now, it'll do no harm to be thinking it over off and on, said Matthew. Things like that are all the better for lots of thinking over.